Hello. More Castlevania. Welcome. We're back again. Yay. Let's see if we can beat this stage. Ugh. Chances are probably not. We'll give him a couple more attempts at it. If not, then this playthrough is over. <laughs> yeah, this has been like two days. Worth of just pure Castlevania. Was well, a small break in between. Yeah, I'm using passwords to get all the way back up here. Of course. No, well, so. that is the point of the password system. Yes, yeah, so you can stop and come back later. Exactly. And you feel a little bit more refreshed and motivated to play 14 hours of Castlevania. I believe it also has something to do with the fact that um, if it gets really late, so obviously, you know, you, you're playing on the game, you're playing on it until, let's say, 12, because your parents don't care, then obviously you need to go to sleep at some point, so you go to sleep, you come back the next day. Sir, allow me to kill you. Allow me to this is the one you. part which you had the worst problem, the, the most amount of problems with. Well, normally when I stop and then come back after a couple of days, I've had time to like think about how to beat the level. Mm. Make sense? It does. <coughs> The one thing that, that a work colleague told me, he was like, if you're ever like overthinking something, leave it for a bit and then come back afterwards because mm. then it gives your brain a chance to figure out how to get the stage done or do whatever you need to do. Hmm. Well, I um, I already knew about that, <laughs> that whole thing. You know, you, you, you're thinking too hard or you're overworking, so then you take a break and then it seems like everything comes a lot easier. That was a concept which I applied a lot whilst I was in school. Uh, during my education of 18 years, it's, it's England. Mm. And basically, if I didn't understand something, what I do is I would take a, well, when I was doing my GCSEs, it was a revision book. When I wasn't doing my GCSEs, it was just my general workbooks. I would take them home and then leave it for, then then leave them like in my bag for Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday, I would pull them out during uh, the first like 20 minutes of the school day, which we used to call tutor time, and um, I would literally just sit there and read over whatever I didn't understand, and then it just kind of became a little bit easier. There were a few things that it didn't work on like percentage increase or percentage decrease in maths, but that was it. Oh, I hate maths. I hate maths too, but at least I didn't have to retake it. That was literally my one nightmare when it came to education, was if I ever would have to retake maths or English. Yeah. Because I hated the pair of them. I had to retake English. I know you did. Which is hilariously surprising. I'm, I I was more surprised about the fact that I didn't have to retake English because I was predicted a D. Well, I was predicted a, like a C and a B. Mm. I, I was predicted a D on both of them because all of the mock papers I fell flat on paper two because paper two was always a pain. I didn't like paper two. No. It was it was longer. On, on, on all of the exams it was longer and it was more difficult. Mm. Because paper one was, you know, creative writing or comparing books, depending on whether or not you were doing English literature or English language, which, which paper one you were doing. But then paper two, um, it was poetry for, for um, literature. But then you had to go and compare and contrast two completely different poems that you had never seen before in section C. It was so strange. I mean, it's possible that the GCSEs could have changed in the past two years. I don't know, because nobody did it last year. Or the year before. I think this sir doesn't want to die. I don't know. I mean, I, I got... A, I, I completely stormed through uh, English literature. I know you did. I got a B. Mm. Okay. My, my oh. problem... Uh, uh, yeah, no, you yeah, did. I got a B and then like an A star in the poetry section. I was like, how the heck did I do that? I hate poetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would just hate a subject that apparently I do well in it. Um, I, I never have that. I don't know. I've, I've never had that. What, hate a subject and I'm doing freaking well in it? Yeah. 
apparently my brain likes it. <laughs> that, was what, that was what annoyed me about um, English language. I somehow like didn't get the grade that I needed. If you need a C in order to. Oh, it's past the year. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are three, well, technically four subjects that you needed a C in in England: it's English literature, English language, maths, and then all three sciences. Well, people aren't even bothered about literature as language. Mm. But you, but if you fail English literature, you still have to retake it, especially now that they're doing them both in the same year. Yeah, at least when I did it, they did them both in well, the that, same that year. That was so confusing. That, that would have been so confusing to me. No, it wasn't that bad. So I did them two separate years. I, I was in the year group that did it. Mm. Did them two separate years. Every other year group did them all together. Yeah. So, it, yeah. It wasn't that bad. It was just more confusing to try and remember which one you were studying at that time because the way that my teacher split it up was you would do English language paper one and then English literature paper two. Yeah that was the way they split it up for the first year and then for the second year they uh, because it was all re revision they basically split it up to you did both papers for English literature at the same time and then both papers for English language at the same time. It made it a heck of a lot easier. Mm. I don't want to get stuck on this this, this eye dropping guy. Because you have to jump in order to hit him. There you go. Okay. There you go. You should be good now. I was still annoyed about the fact that, you know. Mm. I mean, I'm a writer. I love writing. So I don't understand how, how I fail with language. You probably fail language so uh, anywhere. I wasn't going to say that. I, mean, I did end up with a teacher. I know you did. I had two teachers that had two completely different ways of teaching. I had that too. And they were conflicting. Like one, one would say, oh, we're doing this today. They yeah. would say, oh, well, no, we've already done that with, with the other teacher. And then they go, well, we're doing this today. But we've already done that. Yeah, but we'll be doing this today. Because I'm, like, I'm like, okay, whatever. So your, your students this up in paper one and paper two then? No, it was one half of one paper, then the other half of the other paper. Mm. Yeah, when, when I did it, uh, I had one teacher where um, they would, you know, you would be like really happy to go to the lesson, and then the other teacher, it was a bit of a pain because you didn't really want to go to the lesson because the way that they taught was completely differently. Because the teacher who taught paper two treated you like a child, pretty much in every single lesson. It was, it was really annoying because you because we had to deal with the same teachers for two years. Then the other one made all the lessons really upbeat and really fun. That's probably why I didn't fall flat on paper one. This is how you do this, apparently. Oh. And I also uh, loved paper one because um, the ending of it was very, very nice for English language. Because the paper ended with uh, either you know, yeah, with either writing to describe or uh, <laughs> writing a story, the creative writing section. Yeah. So on my paper, it was um, write to describe a market. So like, uh, if you walk into a town centre and then they have like an open, open market, that sort of thing. And then the other one was write a story about abandonment. Oh, um, one of mine was... I uh... nearly <laughs> ran out of space. Hilarious. My one was right to describe a like a plane, mm. and I can't remember what the other one was. But for some reason, I went for the plane. Like I remember, I remember on my first couple of hours to retake uh, language. I remember on my on the pair on um, the both questions, I technically couldn't answer because I never experienced the two things. So, which is good, because then you, then you can experience it, but then I fell flat on it because I couldn't describe it properly. But I'd never been on a plane. Mm. That's true. Not a proper aeroplane, anyway. I've been on like we a little mini plane thing. Which is why I think that you would have worked a lot better with my one, because obviously it was a story. You can literally just take that single word, make like a little brainstorm at the corner of the page, and then just write ideas that's based on that story. The theme for my story was obviously abandonment. So that can literally mean anything. You're very good at abandonment stories. Exactly. I did it. I, and I ran out of time on the exam, but I managed to finish the paper just before. But I was so close to actually asking for more paper. Oh, you are a bumhole. Sorry. 
Not you, the, the, the eye guy. It's the eye guy. If he, he wasn't there, I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the eye spider dude. Mm. Personally, though, I think that our, the British English GCSEs, anyway, are really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. At least for English and, um, and anything which literally doesn't have foundation or higher papers. So upper or lower, because if you have a higher paper, then it means that you're more likely to pass than if you had a foundation paper. Yeah, because it's hard to get a C on foundation, because you have exactly. to get at least 80% of the paper correct, whereas on higher Higher, it's 40. Is it 40? I thought it was 40. Than that. No, it's 40. It was lower, it was lower when I was doing them. It's, so. it's roughly 40. It depends as to which exam you're taking at the time, but in order to um, you know, pass, you have to get about 40%. Because uh, oh, that, that's for a, uh, a middle C. That, that's what my uh, math teacher went with. He was like, okay, we're all going to do higher paper. I know we, we're not, we're not going to learn much to do with higher paper, but I'm going to teach you all so you can at least get a B, and hmm. then I'll be happy with that. Because we were, we were the second to lowest set. Yeah. In, in the maths. So we, we were like the highest foundation. So we could have moved up higher, so then my teacher was like, wait, we're going to do it because you guys have got higher chances of getting, you know, the C if I put you all on higher. That is true. But, well, here's, um, here's a proof as to how rubbish my, my math teacher was. So I was set, set to do higher paper for two years. Throughout those two years, bearing in mind that we were all expected to get either a B or an A, I ended up coming out with a C because the second teacher that I had absolutely sucked. The first one was good, the second one sucked because the way that she taught was completely different to how our original teacher taught. Yeah. She was kind of new. She was brand new to the whole teaching role sort of thing. She might have only had like a little bit of experience. She was also really young, maybe like in her mid twenties. New teachers are so fun to mess around with, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. But the way that she spoke was also really annoying. There was just a lot about her that I didn't like. Does she, does she remind you of my new, um, my new lady? She didn't speak posh, no. My new she, lady. She spoke like she was from Nottingham. From Nottingham? I, lo I love Nottingham. My geography teacher was from Nottingham. Uh, oh, she's that, uh, uh, with her accent, like, really broad? No, 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 no. Uh, no, her, her accent just reminded me of my geography teacher. Oh, who was awesome. He was awesome. He was amazing. Because yeah. it reminds you of that you've been heard to be awesome and then it didn't. Kind of, yes. But then it turned out that she wasn't and then I got really annoyed. And also the way that she tried to explain things, because she, I, I my brain works really weird. So whenever people are trying to explain things, if they try and dumb it down, as people say, so they try to simplify it to the point where an entire class of people will be able to understand it. I will not be able to understand the simplified version. <laughs> Just give me the long explanation with the long words and I'll be fine. Oh, nice. <laughs> but the shorter version, you know, where, um, uh, let's take for example, uh, multiplying fractions. So when I was learning it, Bearing in mind that when I, and when I was learning multiplying fractions, I wasn't even there in the classes, so this might have actually had something to do with it. Where did he come from? They respawned. I came back. Yes. Um, so the way that they explained it was, well, when they tried to simplify it down, they drew a fraction, or two fractions, times between, and then they would circle between each of the numbers that you would have to times together. Two of them now. Mm. So if it was, let's say, 1 over 2 times 3 uh, times 4 we're, over 6. Hang on, we're doing maths whilst we're playing Castlevania? Yeah? Yes. Oh my gosh. Jesus. So you would have to times um, 1 by 6 and then 2 by 4. However, the way that they explained it, because it was simplified, I was like, what? <laughs> the one that I never used to understand was simplifying fractions. Speaking of simplifying, oh. I never used to get that. 3 over 6 is 1 over 2. Yeah, I, I knew how to do it. Well, the way that you do it is you take the bottom number and you take the top number. And you then... times by the same number in the, in the same time table. No. Why, did he, why is he bad? That is not how you do it. 
you take both numbers and you find the lowest common multiple in yeah. those two. Another way to do it is to also divide them. Like if it's an even number at the end, you can divide it by two and then you keep dividing it by two until you get to the smallest number that you possibly Perfect. can without Try dividing it. Trying to teach primary school kids how to freaking do that. <laughs> well, trying to simplify how to freaking do it when you don't quite understand it. It's hilarious. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I mean, when, when it came to simplifying fractions for me, if it was, let's say, 10 over 100, you would just cross out the zeros to start with, so it would be 1 over 10. Yeah. And there you go, it's been simplified. <laughs> Literally, if it's over a 10, you just take out the zero no, as long as the 10 it. is on the top and the bottom, and then you've simplified it. Like, uh, 1 over 30, ew, sorry, 10 over 30 is a uh, third. I love how you can attack what's on the surface. Yes, of course. <laughs> I love how I didn't understand simplifying fractions, it was just, yeah. Hmm. Can I do the chicken exploit? Oh, no, 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 run away. Run away. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, the thing that I didn't get about percentage increase and decrease was knowing when to increase and decrease. Because the way that um, my teacher explained it was, uh, it, depending on the percentage, so if there was an increase of 15%, you would have to add 15 onto 100 and then times it by the original amount, if that makes sense. I could do this for completely no reason, just realise this. Oh well. I, I, I do a lot of things for no reason. I mean, I could just die. There's a chance I could just die. Exactly. I'm doing this all for chicken. Stop doing it for chicken! I need the chicken, yo. You don't need the chicken. Run! <laughs> Run away! It's not even like you're near the boss. Oh, I'm still in the first half of the stage. Yeah, you're still in the first block. I thought it was further on. No. There's at least two blocks to this stage, and the ending of the stage is Frankenstein. And you knew that the stage was going to be long. You said it in the last part. <gasps> <sighs> oh, are you scared? Yes. I don't like this anymore. Duck. Duck. Oh, Duck in a corner. What good idea. Duck in the corner. There you go. And jump. Oh, you're, you are so good. It's because I played Mario. What on earth <laughs> is going on there? Just gotta make it quickly between the pair of them. So once one's gone down, you jump up and then get through. There you go. What, were you nervous? I'm always nervous with this. Oh, you're back. Hello. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah, it's this bit. You kind of have to just go through it really fast. J just leave him. Or kill him somewhere else. I'll just kill him here. You're gonna have to jump. Come on, sir. Yeah, he's not gonna die for you, you know. There you go. That's a knife. I ain't getting a knife. I want to keep my axe. Oh, I think you just need the whip for the boss, though. Can I tree that's come down? On my face? No. You just go keep walking. If you walk, if you walk fast enough, then it's not gonna pop out until after once you've left. Okay. Well, it's not. Alrighty. See you guys next part. Bye. Bye.